Now this is hydrolysis. Another name for this is saponification. Saponification, that's base catalyzed ester hydrolysis. Not acid catalyzed, but base catalyzed ester hydrolysis is called saponification. Incidentally, SAP stands for soap. This is how soap is made, okay. or at least it's one way that soap is made. It turns out that carboxylate salts are soaps, at least if they're long carbon chains. If you have a long chain carboxylate salt, um, that actually is a way of making soap. If we had more time, we could explain why this is, uh, why this is soap, but uh, maybe we'll get into that later in the course. So this is a way of making soap, base catalyzed ester hydrolysis. That reaction was also uh, a reversible reaction, incidentally, for saponification. Okay, so let's try to predict the products here. We have this starting material, two equivalents of sodium hydroxide, and water. If you want to, you can go through the mechanism, although that might take a while here. Um, but if you think you can, you can just draw the products. So you can do the mechanism, or if you want to, you can just try to draw the products. You'd have um, two methanol. Yeah, good. And then you would have um, uh, why do you know how to pronounce that? Uh, no, you drew it correctly. That's good. Great. You were you worked that out very well. What type of functional group did we start with here? Uh, this is uh, these are uh, esters. Right. We could say this is a diester, because there's two of them. So it's good that you recognize that this is the condensed notation for an ester. It really meant this. Very good. What's the name of the reaction that's happening here? It's uh, saponification. Yeah, or base catalyzed hydrolysis. Very good. Um, so who's the L group going to be? Um, the L group is going to be the... Uh, yeah, let me take off. Let me the, uh, you don't need to try to name it. Just which atoms it's going to be. The uh, OCH3. Yeah, that's all I want. The, the OCH3 is going to be the L group. Good. Now, you decided not to go through the mechanism here, which is probably just as well, because it would take a long time to do the mechanism for both of these. So it's good that you're seeing now to do this without the mechanism. Now, it's also good that you saw that eventually, after these leave, they're going to have gained a proton. So by the time these leave, they're going to be alcohols. They don't look like alcohols here, but in the course of the mechanism, they're going to be gaining protons. So you correctly saw that we have two methanols. Now, we know that hydrolysis generally gives us 
carboxylic acids. Hydrolysis of acid derivatives gives us carboxylic acids, but you correctly saw that under basic conditions, we would have the deprotonated form. That was very good too. You do it like this. It would be a little bit conventional here to draw these as salts with the sodium. All right. That's the only thing that you left out. So those are our major products. Good. So again, it's important to know how to do these without doing the whole mechanism because you might have to do multiple hydrolyses in one problem. It's very typical to have to do multiple hydrolyses <laughs> in one problem. We were talking last time we met about how your instructor is giving you a lot of examples now with multiple functional groups. What do you do when there's multiple functional groups? Well, sometimes only one of the functional groups is going to react. So you have to figure out which one will react and which one won't. In this case, though, they both reacted. So you simply had to show what would happen with both of those. So, so if, you had a, uh, if you had an ester, uh, say you had an ester on the bottom part and you had a, a, a the acetyl chloride up top right. without uh, the base, uh, then you wouldn't, have, uh, this, uh, you wouldn't have any reaction with the ester. I think that's no, a good analysis. If you had no acid or any yeah. base catalysis or yeah. catalyzed. Okay. That would be a tough question, but that would be my prediction. Okay. That, seems like a, that seems like a reasonable prediction. Absolutely. That seems very reasonable. That's a good analysis. All right. So the problems we were doing earlier were probably easier than you would see on the test. This is more typical of a test question where you're getting multiple functional groups, but you saw how to deal with that, so that's good. Well, we need to predict the products again here. Uh, if you want, you can go through the mechanism, but if you like, you can just try to draw the product. I know we have a ketone that has to react as well. Well, I'm going to stop and talk about that. This is a good start. This is another ester hydrolysis. Now, under acidic conditions, we want to leave it with the protonated form of the carboxylic acid. So it's good that you ended up with this protonated form of the carboxylic acid. And you saw that after it leaves, or before it leaves, at some point this is going to gain a proton. So it turns into ethanol over here. That's good too. Now we had two different functional groups here. Uh, so we have to decide who is the water going to attack. Now one way to think about this is they, they seem would to be, indicate... Would it be the uh, water attacking or would it be the negative chloride attacking? Well, who put this OH on here? It must have been from the water, right? Oh, yes, yes. So we really are breaking with water. First, we protonated, we, so we didn't go to the mechanism. Oh, I mean on the ketone. Ah, yeah. Um, yeah, so it would not be the chloride attacking the ketone. I don't think we've seen any reactions where, uh, where halogens attack uh, nucleophilically. Um, we did briefly see a reaction where water attacks aldehydes and ketones. Uh, we said that was a category one reaction. Um, however, the way this is written, with the water not over the arrow, it seems to be indicating that we only have one equivalent of water. So if we've already used the water to do the hydrolysis, 
then it would seem like we don't have any water left to attack the ketone. Yeah. Uh, another point here is it's true that water can attack ketones um, in a category one reaction. <laughs> However, that's an equilibrium reaction and the equilibrium actually lies far on the ketone side. So it's true that sometimes water can attack a ketone, and that gives you, I think we call, we talked about this, geminal diols. We briefly talked about how we can make geminal diols. Um, so if you attack a ketone with water, you get this in a category one reaction. Could the, could the ethanol not attack the ketone, the yeah. ethanol produced? That's an excellent point. Yeah, uh, that seems very reasonable, because actually. The, uh, alcohols can act as nucleophiles, correct? Seems like a good point to me. That's not what your instructor did in their answer here, but that actually seems like a good analysis. So yeah, so let's go through that step by step. So 